Five dollars for just the booty hole? You have a hundred thousand subscribers and each pays five dollars for your booty hole. That's a five hundred thousand dollar booty hole. Damn. So okay. the five dollars isn't looking that bad anymore. It's Sophia Franklin. You are listening to Sophia with an S and the S is for phenomenal. <laughs> okay. Leah McSweeney. I am so excited. Today's been a crazy ass day for you. So I want to make this like a safe space <laughs> for you. No, this is nothing. It is. Oh, no, yeah, this is fine. Okay. No, it's you been feel- a, No, it's a crazy day for Kate Middleton. True. True. That's like, you know, sometimes you have to things put things in perspective, right? Let's talk, let's like jump into it. So the Kate Middleton thing she's been missing quote unquote right the media has been going crazy Ugh. everyone's making 58 Disgusting. tiktoks a day kim kardashian blake lively andy cohen mm-hmm. john oliver a lot of people have been making Speculating. but making jokes about it right like right. this woman says in january I'm getting a surgery and I'm not going to be really having any kind of public work or be out there until Easter. I didn't even know she said that. Right. And instead of like being like, wow, she's having some kind of abdominal surgery and she's taking off a bunch of months. That must be pretty serious. People are like making jokes about it. And it's like, what the hell? What's wrong with everybody? I what the f- is wrong with everyone? I. <laughs> I have the exact same outlook on it as you do. And I think I don't think a lot of people think that way, though, the way that we're thinking about it. Yeah, we're thinking like sane people (laughs) that are kind. No, I'm not kidding. It's like and also to ridicule someone and to like conspiracy theories. And the affair. Oh, my God. That's like that's so hurtful. And my friend was staying with me and she's like down the TikTok rabbit hole. Yeah. I love her to death. But she <laughs> kept showing me the Kate Middleton stuff. And I was like, wait, I like don't care because I don't right. know Kate Middleton. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, and I'm sure there's like something going on. And then she was like, well, I think whatever William's having an affair. And this whole time it just came out that she is dealing with cancer. Yeah. So it's. It's just people don't realize, I think, how harmful going out there and like making an accusation, making jokes, like how much that's affecting them behind the scenes. The in- the, the problem is the Internet. Yeah. The problem is just the Internet. I know. We know. And like, but I can't talk <laughs> shit on the Internet. Of course not, because yeah, but you can like it's a, also we can criticize things like we're supposed to criticize things like that we care about yeah like that's why i criticize the left (laughs) (laughs) do you know what i mean like you know like not really anymore because now i'm just like over it but are we talking about like politics no just like a while back people like why are you like are you like right wing because you're like talking about the left i'm like because i care about the left because like that's my party so i'm gonna be like what's wrong so it's like if you make a living off the internet or if like the internet is helpful to you which it's helpful to a lot of people it's like well can't we also criticize it as well and be like this is kind of the things that are fucked up about it and like maybe people should be responsible in some ways especially people with a lot of power like a Kim Kardashian mm-hmm. who's like making a joke like a picture of herself on Instagram and she's like on my way to find Kate like we know where she is she's recovering from a surgery and now right. we know she's getting f- chemotherapy I can compl- <laughs> the fact that Kim Kardashian made that her caption and then Ugh. Andy was like Andy kind of like really pushed the whole speculation about the affair like, he Big tweeted time. about it, like, made it a whole thing. He made it a whole thing. He said, that ain't Kate. He had John Oliver on, and John Oliver was like, I think she's she's dead. She has ovarian, or some, I don't know if it's ovarian cancer, some kind of cancer. Like, this is crazy. Like, mm, don't even get me started, girl. No, I want to get you, like, yeah, I am started. <laughs> Honestly, talking about pop culture is, like, the most low-hanging fruit like dumb shit ever mm-hmm. and of course people make a living off of it we're like doing it right now um no but i but don't we're doing kate, it the opposite no, way. exactly we're saying like what the problem is with it right and like also like to me kate middleton that's not like pop culture and it's not like a person on a tv show she's like the pr- the princess of wales you know she's going to be the queen and like that's people can't even respect this woman like it's wild i think it points to a larger issue which is women and how they're portrayed in the media versus men oh my god 
<clears throat> I did this like um, interview with OK Magazine like a month ago. Mm-hmm. And they asked me who my dream guest would be. I said Leah McSweeney. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> then, I knew it. And, and then, then who? And then I said Amber Heard. I think the way that that fucking just took such a turn and she was so ostracized and just crazy. villainized. I know. And listen— I disagreed with her uh, Washington Post article, like being able, like she should have gotten sued for defamation, right? Because everyone knew they were both toxic. Yeah, she shouldn't have been the hero in that, Thank and she you. shouldn't have been the villain. Like this Thank should have you. been like, okay, you have major addiction, alcohol problem, and you're shitting on someone's bed, and you both suck and need help. You, <laughs> that is exactly what I said when everything was coming out. That was like one time that I spoke up because it was like. Johnny Depp is our childhood hero, like Pirates of the Caribbean, yay. And this monster, Amber Heard. And I was like, they were both fucked up in that relationship. Uh, Of course. And then that Netflix show. Neither of them were innocent. No. No. (laughs) Like, neither of them. And she got, like, she, what? She, like, is hiding in Spain now. Oh, my God, I know. Not to add any conspiracy (laughs) theories. No, she's in, she lives in Spain with her daughter. Yeah. She had to flee. She had to flee. I would have done the exact same thing. So it's just, it's a whole thing. Um, Oh, my God, I want to say something so bad. Okay, just say it. All right, well, the same person that Johnny Depp hired to help him with his image and tarnish Amber Heard's and literally they had a bot such they hired bots they hired you know there's such dark it's like dark magic it's like Mm -hmm. real dark arts you know like crisis PR stuff someone that I'm having an issue with hired the same person Mm. that Johnny Depp hired and Harvey Weinstein killed Harvey Weinstein stories and you know it's the dark arts I didn't know that about the bots. So what? They just get a bunch of bots to post yeah. positive, like, go Johnny. Right, and then propaganda. negative things about Amber. You know, not that I really see that happening to me, right? I'm not saying it's even on yeah, that yeah, level, yeah. but it's the same person. He hired the same person, right? And so, does that scare you? At first it did, but then it didn't. Like, I know that someone tried to, um, a certain publication reached out to an ex-boyfriend of mine. Mm-hmm. And was like, we heard that you are, like, really against what Leah's doing and that, like, Leah asked you for loans. And I was like, and he sent me the email and he responded back, like, Leah's never asked me for a dime. Um, (laughs) Also, what if you did? Yeah, like, but also what if I did, but I didn't because I have too much pride. And, um, (laughs) and, uh, you know, he's like, she's doing better than, like, 99% of the people in New York. I think you have this wrong. And I believe every single thing in her thing that she's doing um so that's it so and that's course, dope. right so they never they never published the story obviously but then I also got an alert that someone was trying to like log into my credit thing to see my credit score which is a 730 <laughs> off never have paid my rent a day late okay so try to come for me you can't 730 is good I, I've worked so hard same. at it Sophia oh my god same three years ago mine was a I think a five something same. No, me too. So, yeah. yay us. <laughs> Financial literacy. It's so important. We are killing it. Killing but, it. but that's insane. Yeah, so no, they're that digging scary. deep. So they're trying to dig deep. But the thing is, it's like, I was like, I've been, I was a meth head when I was a teenager. I'm on OnlyFans showing my tits. What do you want from me? Mm-hmm. What, I, I'm, I'm honest about all of my shit. So like, what could you really come at me for? That's a great place to be in. <laughs> like You have nothing to hide. I don't. And also like, I have, like, friends from when I'm 16 years old. I still talk to my employees from, like, 20 years ago. They still fuck with me. Like, I'm sure there are some people that would have bad things to say about me. But, like, I put my head down at night and go to sleep knowing that, like, my side of the street is pretty fucking clean. Mm -hmm. I'm not fucking perfect, but it's pretty motherfucking clean. And if you're not perfect, you own it. Yeah. You have have that personality. Yeah. I just want to rewind real quick to you were a meth head when you were. <laughs> <laughs> That's like my favorite like thing I love, to say. No, I love saying like I was smoking Oxycontin in high school and people oh are like, God, you were? Yes. I didn't know you could do that. How do you do it? I didn't know you could. I didn't know you that can't. smoking Oxycontin you was a can. thing. You can. You, d- you definitely can. So like we would get Oxys. And then crush it. No. So you oh. have to actually peel off. Like, mm. the layer, which right. I found out because I was, like, throwing up one time. And I was like, what the fuck? 
And then all you have to do is put it on the aluminum foil. <laughs> and smoke it like crack. <laughs> no, actually. Yeah. And then you like follow. I remember the girl was like showing me how to do it. And she was like, okay, and then you're going to put the lighter underneath. And the smoke will come out. And you have to follow the smoke with the straw. And but that only lasted like a few months. Thank God. God. Thank God. Because she stole all of my fucking money and disappeared. And I was like, okay, so she saved your life. <laughs> she did. She really did. Like, and I also I don't know how, like how old you are, but like I look at you and I'm like, my my daughter's seventeen. You I'm know? thirty one. So, so. Okay, so I thought you were like twenty six. <laughs> that yeah. will be that will be clipped yes. for sure. Continue. Yeah. So um. You know, I, I think of, like, when I hear other women, they're, like, younger than me, and I hear, like, their stories of, like, getting fucked up in high school, even though I did the same thing. It makes me be like, oh, my God, my daughter. You know, and thank God my daughter, like, pretty much, like, behaves, and she's very open with me and stuff. But it's scary. Think about, like, little teenage girls, like, doing drugs. It's, I'm like, I can't believe I was doing all that. Um, I told my mom for the first time, like, a few years ago, and my mom was horrified. jaw to the floor. Oh. And I'm not trying to downplay it. I know I talk about it, and I'm l- laughing. I know. We, we were irreverent about it because we have to be sometimes. But it's really scary. It is. It and is. there's obviously, like, an epidemic in this country of just addiction and alcoholism. It's really scary. So, okay, let's talk about that. Because in your daughter's Gen Z mm. generation, I feel like they are not— as alcohol obsessed as our generation was or no that's what the data is saying so i do believe that um i know that my 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 daughter and her friends like drink sometimes mm-hmm. you know obviously but like i also don't think that i know she's not drinking the way i was and i they're not seeking out like escaping like i wanted to escape myself so badly and like yeah. destruct self destruct and i don't see that with her but like they're like, you know, she'll show me like different things and talk to me about like f- kids in the school or kids and friends, friends of friends. And like there's definitely kids still like going to rehab for shit. And like, you know, kids are around. But I do I do think that they are they're doing things differently than we did. And I'm an elder millennial because I'm 41. Um <laughs> So the I elder still, I'm a, is crazy. I'm an elder. I'm a geriatric <laughs> millennial, but I'm a, I'm a millennial. I am. You know, I'm not Gen X. So <laughs> I think elder is crazy for me because I'm from Utah. I'm like, oh, you call cool. like the missionaries like elder, but I'm not Mormon. I was going to. Oh, wow. No, I didn't I'm know not. you were from Utah. I was going to ask you where you're from. Yeah, I'm from Utah. Oh, but you were never a Mormon. I thought everyone there is a Mormon. They basically kind of are. And I was raised a little bit Mormon. Got it. But I went to private Catholic school. Okay. And then my grandma's Jewish. So it's like, what the fuck? Ooh, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. But like, I'm also like, the guilt is like never ending (laughs) with that kind of upbringing. Right. But I had a very similar thing that you did with alcohol and drugs growing up. Like I was, I have been arrested three times. I have two mugshots. Uh, for underage drinking. Oh. Like, I would take it to a level that it did not need to go. Wow. And how about now? How's your vibe? So now I've chilled, uh, Great. like, done a complete 180, but I haven't cut it out completely. Yeah, well, if you don't have, if you can chill and not get arrested, <laughs> right? <laughs> then, like, yeah. Yeah. I think there was a big turning point when I was 25, 26, and I don't think I've ever talked about this, but I'm going to f- it. I was drinking out of control and I finally found this therapist and she said, you're, it's scaring me how you're drinking. Cause I would, for her to say I, that. Yeah. yeah. And I was living in New York alone. I didn't have like a friend group yet, like mm. nothing. And so she prescribed me naltrexone. Have you yeah, heard of that? Of course. Which is actually for people. Well, it was made for people getting off like painkillers. Yeah. So the naltrexone, it doesn't make you sick. Craving, right? It will curb the craving. And then if you take it, the alcohol won't give you the same like rush or euphoric effect. Wow. So I started taking that. And by taking it, it just completely changed my drinking habits. That's amazing. I mean, right. I'm not going to try it, but it sounds no, great. For, right. That sounds wonderful. Because there's a lot of people, Leah, because you are a rare case where you are able to stick to your sobriety. How yeah. many people can 
can't. I mean, listen, there are there are a lot of people who recover and sit, but I, I also have been someone who's been on it. Like I have been it's not just been some like, oh, I stopped and then everything then it, and I yeah. stopped forever, yeah. you know, but people do. And I was just with my friend yesterday who celebrated her 14 year anniversary and she's younger than me and we came in at the same time to the to the program and got sober together and of course now I don't have that much time as her but like people do do it but it isn't just like this like black and white thing where it's so easy to just stop and I think having options like this is so fucking important but also it's so amazing that you were able to to now drink in a moderate, like yes. healthy way. And, yeah. and an alcoholic wouldn't be able to do that, obviously. Yeah. But there's some there's just some people who like, are out of control drinkers or problem drinkers that can change their habits. Yes. I think mine was it had less to do with alcohol and more to do with I was covering up mm. so much just depression, anxiety, yeah. and like dark shit. Yeah. And then I would just go it. wild. Yeah. And but sometimes like I'll take it like here and there if yeah. I'm gonna go to some wild party right. but I don't really need it anymore but I'm one of the fortunate people but that's cool that you I'm not gonna say you endorse it well I, I do I know I do. pay me now trek some what's want, up yeah exactly get that big pharma <laughs> money baby <laughs> I'm on prestige so if you want to sponsor me um no but I I do total I support anything that's just gonna help people you mm -hmm. know what I mean like and yeah like that sounds wonderful. A lot of people would argue like it's an all or nothing thing. What you're oh, saying no. for certain yeah, people, for certain it people, is. Yeah, for me. Yeah, for sure. You know, but that's not everyone at all. So you know? let's talk about your journey. Do you feel less like do you feel like it's less of an achievement, your sobriety, because you don't have the 14 year <laughs> like golden medal? No. So, and I'm going to tell you, I don't even, I don't really see it as like an achievement or non-achievement. Okay. Because it's, I really see it as some kind of like, it, it's a very complicated and like complex disease, like of my brain. Seriously, it's this weird mental, physical thing that happens if I have one fucking sip of alcohol, like I will start obsessing over how many more. And it obviously looks different for everybody, but that's like the general thing. It's like a phenomenon of craving, you know? Yeah. And thank you for checking me on that because no, it shouldn't be referred no, to as an issue. No, but some people maybe see, but it's also like, oh, great. I didn't like get blackout drunk and like ruin a part, you know, ruin my life. Like good for me. Oh, I'm just like a normal functioning member yeah, yeah, of society. Yeah, yeah. Even though a lot of people would. And I, when I, it's also like, with other people like my friend yesterday I'm like you've been sober for 14 years it's so fucking dope I'm so fucking proud of you you know but like for me I wouldn't say because I'm like harder on myself you mm -hmm. know but it is it's an achievement in its own right and I actually have two years back because even though I haven't drank in almost four years but there were like substance things that were like going on okay. um but I was very mad at myself for having to start the day count again and also this the the relapse or no, it wasn't really a relapse because it, I had, I didn't drink but like there were things going on and then I was in the mental hospital and you know it was a very it was like a rebirth and it was very painful but and I did feel sorry for myself in a way like I can't but you were believe angry at yourself I was very angry at myself which is like not good not good yeah but now I'm not at all good yeah and now I'm very much so in a place of like I don't even know who I am sometimes because I'm just like so grateful. Like mm -hmm. I don't even give a fuck about anything else. I'm like, I'm fucking sober. My fucking daughter's healthy. What more do I need? Yeah. Like everything else, nothing else even really matters. Being, you know, <laughs> I like, love the hair. I know, my, <laughs> right after. Nothing else matters. But yes, being able to achieve all the shit that you have with having that disease just makes it even more of an achievement. And Thank I'm calling you. it an achievement Thank again. You. I appreciate that. But though. not the sobriety, like your actual achievements, Thank you know? You. Thank you. Which is dope. The other thing I think is like people um, are like, oh, I'm going to get sober. My life's going to be over. I'm not going to be able to do anything. There's fucking badass people sober. Okay. Like really. And it's not even on some like, it's obviously this has been a public thing for me now to talk about because of everything. And I don't want to be, I'm not like a good poster person for sobriety because I've like relapsed and this and that or whatever. But, um, see, I don't agree with that. Thank, thank you. And I also just don't want to be because it's like, I never wanted it to be, it's not like who I am. It's just part of who I am. Right. Yeah. Like, this is just part of who I am. I've dealt with it since I started drinking when I was 13 years old. I've been to like so many fucking rehabs, like 
it's just it's been a thing, you know, mm -hmm. but I want to be seen as more than this addiction thing that I have been yes. dealing with. Right. You yes. know what I'm saying? But it has shaped my life in such a way. It's extreme. It's it's your history. Exactly. It's extremely important to you, but you don't yes. want that. You don't want to be put in that box. Exactly. I don't want to be in any box. I right? feel that. Yeah. And then it's like, OK, but like, how are we like branding you? It's like, I don't, I, know, I don't I'm all like, I love your branding. <laughs> <laughs> I did say that, but it's so good. No, I remember looking at your like, what is it? The who, hoobie? Yes. Your hoobie is like a work of art. Thank I had, I didn't you. even know how to do mine. Now I just have a link tree. I'm like, I, I mean, can't do this. Oh my God. I looked at yours. I'm like, who the hell? This is amazing. I mean, baby girl, I'm not going to take the credit for that. Well, That's my team. Well, but your team is this great. artistic, the orange and blue, like. Was your idea the orange and blue? Because it's it, a good color I think way. it was like a group. It was like all of us. Yeah. Who's, who was all? How many people are there? There's actually not that many people. <laughs> like 20 men in suits. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like what's going on? <laughs> all women. Oh, that's All good. women. We love that. Um. I probably we have like hate men. No, I'm kidding. I don't. <laughs> I'm totally. That's kidding. exactly what this podcast needs. Like I'm seen as an incel's worst nightmare. <laughs> like I'm seen <laughs> as just a dude's fucking like. Oh my god! You know, you know people call nightmare me, fuel. No, people called. People have been calling me for years. Like before I was on the show or whatever, just with my brand and stuff. So like, isn't that that man hating woman that has that streetwear <laughs> brand? And I'm like. I'm not a man hater. I'm just like, I've just been through it with men. You know, I, I get it. We need them to like build shit or whatever. And like, <laughs> you're assholes. <laughs> but like, you know, I'm like, I have my baby. I don't need to find a guy to have another one with. And, you know, but I, I'm not as jaded as I was in my 30s. I was really on some like, I fucking hate men. And now I'm a little bit more, I'm a little softer about it all. I'm like in the middle of segueing into that because I did like I grew up with a single mom mm -hmm. my stepdad who I refer to as my dad he was in the picture since I was six a lot of substance abuse issues like in and out of rehab um so I think my perception of men like I kind of grew up like many shit right you are know? you and your mom so close beyond beyond that. beyond yeah. like best friend mm. but that and then and then that kind of became my vibe right like that totally. was what I kind of built my my following and shit was not being a man hater <laughs> but but kind of just giving women the confidence cuz we're already at like an uneven we are. And Peel. also, yeah, it, it's true. Even though I do see that, like, we are, um, gra we're like getting more degrees than men and we are like graduating at a higher rate than men and all of that. But we still have to deal with fucking men. You know what I mean? And we have to deal with, we have to deal with women. We have to deal with women that are upholding very deeply ingrained beliefs that are so fucking. Um, outdated. restrictive and outdated and like and outdated and I really like learned that from being on the show and like being and being in the public I guess and being like oh my god these women what the hell is wrong with women can you give me an example <laughs> oh yeah I mean um I guess you know having an old like being like I'm on OnlyFans which by the way I'm like not like doing porn but also no, I was, no no shade yeah. like I've been pro sex work pro pro pornography like anti-censorship whatever but um the fucking the the comments are like ridiculous they're insane and then also the comments of me you know dealing with the situation I'm in now mm -hmm. that come from women are just wild and just in general all the time it's it just they're all the time you know I, whatever yes. it is always something no matter what Oh, new face. Who's this? No, I'm trying to get a new face. This is nothing. Wait till you see me in five years. Okay. So I'm like, it's just weird. Women are the women are we're our own worst enemies. Yeah. I really believe that. It's not the men, it's the women. And we do that because the way we were raised. Exactly. Right? To be yeah. competitive, to get be jealous, to oh have God. to hold on to your man as tightly as possible. It's so it's so weird and and really like when I first got on the show too, Bethany had been 
Bethany was supposed to be on with me. We had never like met, but she had suggested me. And then when they found out she wasn't on and I and I was still going to be on, it was like, this is her replacement. Like, Beth, like Leah's Bethany's replacement. And like and it was just all this weird press that was like almost pitting us against each other. I'm like, this is so weird. Like, I remember that. I'm like, what is this? Yeah. And then, of course, I'm like, oh, this is how the show works. And this is what it is. It's about women against women. You know, like I didn't know. I did, did not realize that. You yeah. know, and then it's like it's polls. Which woman do you like best? And which woman is, you know, it's very, it's really gross. I, I spoke to um one of the housewives of one of the franchises. I won't say who. Mm -hmm. But we were um, talking and she said that she loves everything that reality TV has given her except how they portray women and, like, yeah. what it's doing, at, like, as a society. Like, I how we're, like, we're consuming it. It's really interesting because we think about... I think about things so differently now that I have experienced this, but I'm like, okay, I think about what I consume. A lot of people think about what they consume, what they eat, right? It's like organic or like, you know, protein or keto or whatever, but it's like, what about what you're watching? Yeah. Right? Like, what about what you are watching on TV? And like, I I thought that this was kind of like, uh, I, at first I was like, oh, this is cool because middle-aged women usually get written off because it's like, oh, you're old now and like, you know, whatever. <laughs> like, yeah, and, and like, you know, you're not any use to society and you're losing your youthful looks or whatever. Yeah. And I was like, this is cool because women that are like in their 40s, 50s, 60s can come on a show and like be the star. And like, I thought that was cool, you know, and like start a business or do whatever. But then it's like, that's really not... That's 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 the cool part. But then also it's like there's just so many tragic tales and yeah. endings that come from it. And like the blackout, the glamorizing of the blackout drinking. And it's just it's dark. That's let's talk about that, because yeah. everyone knows reality TV. They encourage heavy, heavy alcohol. use. Yeah, they definitely do. Like, yeah, everyone knows that. Yeah. How, like, how do they do it exactly? Okay, and I'm, yeah, I'm going to address this because there's a lot of, like, um, people being like, no one forces, like, some of the women are coming out being like, I was not forced, but they're also, like, they weren't, they're not alcoholics, the ones saying this, so it's, like, a different kind of thing, but also, no one forces you to drink, but you won't, get, you'll get but, kicked off but the literally, show. there's alcohol in every scene. You're constantly asked if you need a new drink. They're constantly pouring you new drinks. If you don't drink, they interrogate you and ask you why you're not drinking. They, they say that you're more fun when you are drunk. And they basically, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, so, so how, you know, so it's not like uh, they're pouring alcohol down your throat, but then, and then, you know, add another layer to that. And it's like, if you're a woman who is struggling with like alcoholism and not sober and drinking and have unlimited alcohol and no one to like ever say like, are you OK or this might be a problem? I just really feel like, honestly, this shit is like it's it's like finding women who are like super vulnerable in this position and then like exploiting and using it. And, like, it's like kicking someone when they're down. This is going to be a crazy question, so answer however you want. Would you say they kind of pick cast members who seem to already have, like, some kind of substance abuse issue? With you, they did. Because you're, yes. you're a very, like, interesting case. Because I remember the, your first season, you talked about your sobriety. Right, exactly. So I think, like, um, you know, I think it seems like... They are really good at choosing women who are particularly susceptible to mental health issues, financial problems, mm -hmm. um, fraud, alcohol, drug addiction, and then ones that are just really desperate to be famous, mm. even if they have they have money. So it doesn't like they're not really like yeah controlled financially by them, which is like a whole thing. But um, you know, I think that they're very smart about who they have on. Of, of course, yeah. There's a whole system I, in place to do that. Yeah, and there's a it's there's a lot of manipulation and coercion and yeah. When you went on to the show, did you were you thinking already? I'm gonna end up drinking on this shit probably. 
so I had um I when I found out I was like going to be on the show it was August second of two thousand nineteen, and I had been on a bender. Okay, and I had started drinking five months before that or four months before that, and then I was like, oh my god, I'm going to be on the show. I need to stop drinking because I know that that's going to be a fucking nightmare. And I was really like, I'm going to not drink. Mm. I'm going to not drink. And I had told the producers like, I'm going to not drink. Like you know. And then I remember telling one of the women like, I'm not going to drink. She's like, well, don't talk about that on camera because if you do drink, then it's going to look like you have a problem. I'm like, but I do have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> you know. So. Yeah. You know, it's like I I'm like I, you know, of course, no one told me to like get naked and throw tiki torches. I did that on my own. I mm -hmm. completely own that. You know, like I, no one told me to like throw a fucking ravioli in Ramona's face. I felt like doing that, you know, but when I stopped drinking and like saw what was really going on. Mm hmm. Yeah, that was crazy. Do you blame Bravo for your relapse? I don't think the word is blame. Okay. You know, I think that this is more of a um, let's change the way things are done and, like, protect people mm -hmm. uh, that you're making a shit ton of money off of. Because yeah. I think that, like, I should have the same rights when I walk into that work environment as like someone who walks into any work environment has right yeah so um now that you put it that way that really registered yeah because i i worked for a company and i remember they had to sign something basically saying things will get crazy and boundaries will be pushed and you right. can't really do shit about it sign the dotted line right which is insane looking back yeah. but your situation way more public. I feel like there's this whole movement happening. And tell me if I'm wrong, but Bethany Frankel, mm -hmm. she came out and said that reality stars, herself included, are not getting paid royalties. Yeah. And these episodes are rerunning every second of the day. Right. And did she have any... Um, like was Anything she Anything to do with my yeah. thing? Oh no. Uh -huh. Like did she give you any inspo? No. Oh my god, no. Because, like completely separate. Yeah, because listen, I like my I think I've been dealing with this and my attorney has been we've been dealing on a legal level with this for, for like way, over a year. Okay. Like way before she started saying it, but I'm glad she did, obviously, you know, and like yeah, the royalty thing and she's yeah, I think she brings up so many good points, you know, but there's definitely like there was not like any kind of Your thing connection. is completely different. Yeah. I just have never seen this the public. timing was very crazy yeah. though. And I was happy cuz I was like, wow, okay, I'm glad I'm not like the only one that's kind of like Go yeah, saying something. On. Yeah. Cuz okay, I mean how many, how did the women react to you? Oh, to me doing this? Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, I've gotten private messages from people, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, I think that, um, you know, I, these are paid and these are women who want to be on the network. You know, the, the so amount they're of, not going to say shit. You know, of course not. They're I don't, not I don't say blame, how they really no. feel. I mean, I don't, I don't blame them at all, you know, like, and my, yeah, like. It's not so have you been thing. ostracized to some degree? Or you kind of ostracized I yourself? I think I ostracized myself. You're like, I'm out. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> kind of like, I'm cutting the cord now, you know? Like, yeah. Yeah. But I still, you know, I don't I don't have any bad... I mean, those women, they do hard work. And they they're... Do. I feel bad for them, to be honest. Like, mm -hmm. other people don't understand because they're like, oh, like, you're making... You're getting paid and you're... You have this giant platform and... Oh, my God. Like, because some people look at people on TV and think, oh, my God, I want that life. Like, you know, so they're like, how dare you complain about that? Like, yes. that's a very weird thing, too. It's like people get very personally offended when you, like, complain about something. Mm -hmm. It's like or when you say something isn't right or if you say I had a bad experience doing this. Like, people became very... And I'm like, this is my experience. I get to say if it was shitty or not. Mm -hmm. Like, this is not about anyone else. It's the weirdest thing. Yeah. It's like having a platform. It's like, oh, my God, stop. Yeah. I don't want a motherfucking platform. Right. Like, <laughs> take it away from me. Like, I, who cares? Yeah. Who 
cares? I had one before I was on the show. We're going to get so much shit for this, but I feel the exact same way. Like, my following and my listeners and my following are everything to me. They are. Yes. Specifically my listeners. But my following was like a byproduct of me podcasting. Right. Like, I was not very active on social media mm-hmm. and trying to, yeah. you know— and so I think, and for you too, you went on reality TV and it was a byproduct of being on TV. Yes. I don't regret it. I'm, I am grateful to some degree, but to it, some degree, I'm also we, like, why do we have to like, why do we have to, what do men have to do this? And do men, <laughs> don't men don't have <laughs> to do this. Thank you so much. Men don't have to do this. I'm so grateful. <laughs> Thank you so much. Like, fuck that. Like, why do I have to, I'm grateful for my health. I'm grateful for my daughter. I'm not grateful for fucking Instagram. I fuck off. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yes, oh I my do. God. Like, okay. I'm so glad that people are, you know, people that are supportive. And of course it's nice. There are more important things than life, though. Like, I'm grateful for real shit. Like, that my fucking hands work and my mm-hmm. feet work. And, I mean, you know? You have a roof over your head. Uh, yes. <laughs> like, Health. Right. We're like alive. Like, the real shit. So that's why it's so fucking weird that people are so obsessed with this, like, you know, thing that we have to show gratitude there, all the time people, for them. It's, it's, it's a thing right it's now. A thing. It's a big thing right now where people are saying, uh, influencers are just not, and I don't even want to refer to us as like influencers, but whatever. Who right, cares? Whatever, yeah, we are. We're influential. We are influential. That's I like. I that. like that word better. <laughs> <laughs> when you're as influential as, as us, us. <laughs> then also so many people hate follow me <laughs> that it's like, why am I supposed to be grateful for oh, these? Same. Oh my god! I'm like, why are you following me then? Like, literally, why are you following me? Why do you have a dog picture in your profile and a psalm from the Bible? That's in the, your bio. That's the biggest no no. You are not my married to the mob like demographic, mm-hmm. so I don't care if you're following me or not. Basically, if you have some kind of following and you make one complaint or reveal one bad day or say one thing that you're not feeling grateful about, you get slammed. Why is this? This is very weird. This is what I'm noticing too. And I find it so weird. And it's definitely not a good way to make me feel grateful for anything. Because then I'm like, (laughs) why would I? I'm about to deactivate this shit. Actually. So what the fuck? Yeah. I mean, I've turned off every... You can't DM me. You can't reply oh, to my you DMs. No, unless I follow you. Okay. I'm losing. Yeah. In, no, I'm losing Instagram followers. I don't give a fuck. I'm like, bye. Well, if it makes you feel any better, well, that's good. You don't give a I fuck. I'm I'm losing like a thousand a week. Good, great. We anytime, don't want anytime them. I post. I think people get reminded oh God, they follow me, me and they're like, wait, Sophia, me too. <laughs> Me too. They're okay. like, oh, I hate her. Ah, follow. <laughs> Bye. Bye. I'm trying I'm, to get down to 200,000 Instagram followers. I'm at 460. <laughs> so is that, okay, so we have a good chunk of our following hate us. Because yeah, the second I'm not we making post, money off of these. It's like, I'm, I'm not, not either. I'm not, you're not helping me pay my rent, mm-hmm. like, straight up. So. Yeah. Bye. Bye. And I, well, I actually quality over quantity. I appreciate an unfollow over a DM like you're a fucking dumbass bitch and whatever. Just unfollow me. I actually yeah. love that. Yeah, totally. Like that's great. Yeah. Okay. So do you regret going on reality TV? And then we're gonna do like a swerve and we're not talking about reality. Yeah, I TV. don't regret anything in my life. If I was gonna regret something, it would be like <laughs> shit way worse than yeah. this. You know, even though it wasn't a great experience. But but of course also like it's part of my story and like there are I'm this is it and I'm living it and like whatever I don't know what's gonna happen and I'm whatever. It just is what it is, you know? Yeah. Would you do it again? I don't think they're gonna have me on again. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think I'm going to be on Ultimate Girls Trip. I don't even think they're doing any more Ultimate Girls Trips. There's so many lawsuits coming out of that show. But, like, I like this is fun. You know, like, I like this. But I don't really, I'm never, like, I don't really want to, like, entertain people. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I like doing my brand. I like being creative. Um, I'm trying to, like, flip homes. Like, you know what I mean? And you not are? on a show. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting into real estate stuff. Yeah, so, you know, and, and of course, and, and Married to the Mob, relaunching the brand and let's stuff ta- like that. And I have this, this, the app. You know, honestly, ever since I, like, 
now that I'm far removed, like pretty far removed from the reality TV situation, just so things are like so many I'm busier than ever. And I feel so much more like creative because that takes such a imagine like your jobs to like fight with people or like <sighs> people have to bring up horrible things about your life and try to uncover dark secrets that you have or like whatever where you need to pretend you're rich to America like it's exhausting right your fight or flight <laughs> oh my God. is here oh, it's crazy your nervous system constantly and I bet you if you if they ran a test on you now because I just got this test done your sympathetic nervous system oh, is yeah. shot Oh, oh, I know. I've done. No, I've done a lot of work on it though to oh, like get have. it like lots of supplements, like a neuro, a naturopath doctor. Shout out, Doctor Susan. Okay, we're gonna have to talk about this after oh, the show. I have a, I have a psychic slash acupuncturist slash healer who will come to your house, and I'm telling you, while she's doing acupuncturist talks to your dead family members, who will reset your whole like your chi. Like I'm all doing. I'm doing. I do all that stuff. You know. I, yeah. It's and part I'm of the healing I'm into process. That. I'm I'm totally into that. I yeah. just had a doctor's appointment. She what said, kind of "Tests did they do?" So she hooked me up to a machine, and I'm also very. I take everything with a grain of salt. I don't know what kind of machine it was <laughs> at all. What did it attach to? <laughs> like, <laughs> the bottom of my feet. Oh, really? That's so interesting. Yeah, and then it had like my like blood pressure, and then it was around my ankles too. But then this is the test that really scared me. She was doing. She had, like, the light and was checking my eyes, right? Mm. And she said, your pupils don't, they're not changing when the light comes over. And Whoa. you're not even having any kind of reaction. Oh, my God. When the light comes to your eyes, like, you're you're dead, low-key. Oh, my God. Not dead. That was a crazy thing no, to say. No, but, like, you're dead but, like, inside. You're, <laughs> no, I'm yeah, kidding. No, you're not dead inside. But, but kind yeah. of. Yeah, your you're sympathetic nerd. Like, you're not even, like— reacting your body is not having like the regular reactions PTSD to shit stuff probably yes yeah and i was living in the fight or flight thing for so long and then it just boom oh my god i know Ooh, Ooh. people are not gonna like Ooh, listening to this they are also not. so grateful for everything so i'm so grateful for my platform and everything, and everything. i would be i would be nothing without a reality television i would be fucking just no one oh. would know who I was. I wouldn't be in legal issues. I, you know, PTSD, oh. trauma up the fucking yin yang. Yes, but grateful because we're going to be stronger. Yeah. We're going to be stronger character building. For it. <laughs> it sounds so crazy. <laughs> um, okay, let's talk about this app. Yes, that you're building, which is genius. Which yes. I was reading and I was it, it was kind of like the Octo Buddy like why didn't I think about that yeah, you're gonna be <laughs> are you gonna be on it because you're absolutely you be, oh my god good we're having an event will you please come yes yay absolutely my um ex of four years was completely sober oh my god this is so major no like you need to be I will be there like, you really have to be I will so, so let's explain okay, what it so is Club Pillar is a dating app but also like a social networking members only app and in-person events and networking system platform uh, that is the brainchild of Jesse Yervader, who is the CEO, who's uh, amazing. She's 25 years old. She's been sober since she's 19. Um, she brought me in as an advisor and creative lead. I'm so excited because it just aligns with, like, obviously everything I care about. And it's not it's not for people it's not just for people who like don't drink or like are in recovery but for people who are sober curious mm -hmm. people whose lives don't revolve around getting drunk yeah. like if you drink sometimes like cool but like with the dating thing it's kind of weird like the dating world it's so much of it is like let's meet at a bar people are nervous they get drunk if you don't drink they're like why don't you drink like it takes all away from all it takes all that out of the equation yeah and if you're like sober curious or sober you're probably like focused on other things that are like good for you you know yes. so it's like-minded people yes and and i think it goes without saying you're down to date someone who won't who doesn't, who doesn't drink. drink which a lot of people are not because I remember when I was in that relationship, they mm -hmm. were like, Don't you get fucking bored? Like when you go on vacation, you're like drinking wine by yourself. And I was like, Not really. Right. Like what? 
I mean, he, I mean did you? I mean, <laughs> I mean, I, tell the truth. <laughs> Maybe you're not going to be on the I, app. I, no, I I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I think I would get bored for other reasons. There was a huge age gap. Okay, so it wasn't okay. a, it wasn't the drinking. I don't thing. think it. No, yeah. no. Were you getting because, like wasted on the trips alone? No, having a few glasses of wine, a little wine uh, at dinner. Maybe during the dark period of our relationship, okay. maybe I was like yeah. kind of revved it up. Yeah. <laughs> but that had nothing like I was totally fine with him not drinking. Right. And I think it's something that I need because right. I can get, you know, a yeah. little bit so, wild. Yeah, so you it's nice to have someone who doesn't and encourage he, that. And he also was sober, not for reasons of like uh, alcoholism. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it worked. Stuff. Yeah. Um, I think that that app idea is just so brilliant. And I will absolutely be posting about it or whatever, Yay. going to the party. Thanks. So what do you suggest for people who get nervous, like on a first date and they mm. don't want to lean on alcohol? Or what's like a good just first date feeling. idea? Feel your feelings. Like that's crazy. Feel your motherfucking feelings. It's it's really crazy. Being actually being sober and feeling your feelings is so much crazier than like doing so many drugs, which I used to think I was like so cool and crazy for like doing a million drugs. This is actually a crazy, crazy experience. Like I haven't even gone there yet. It's fucking nuts. I have not sat alone and felt my feelings mm -mm, in a long time. Really? Here and there, but it freaks me the fuck out. And then I'll I'll cover it up with it, not necessarily substances, mm. but I'll jump into work. Yeah, I'll start yeah. online shopping. I, I'll yeah, I feel you that. know mm -hmm. what I mean. But that's the craziest yeah, shit just, you can do is sit with your feelings. Yeah, and feel, them. feel your feelings and just be nervous. It's ner it is nerve wracking to go on a first date. I mean, it's probably not going to work out, so just don't. <laughs> Be that nervous. <laughs> He's probably going to be ugly in real life. No, I'm kidding. No, that's what he I might have a micro dick. I tell women all the time, use it as like a network. Like I think of a yeah. first date as networking, which is maybe fucked up. No, it's not. That's a that's a way to take the pressure off of it and not or make it, it feel so like, yeah, this, this could be my date. this is my husband. Oh, my God. This could be my future. Hell that's like no. too much. And if you're going in thinking that, he's going to fucking smell it on you and be like, this bitch is a little I'm too much. Like, nah. <laughs> but also I'm like now trying to date with intention and okay. I might just straight up on a first date be like, I'm 31 and I have to get pregnant and get married. So what's up? Yeah, why not? There's like, people, there's men who want that too. So yeah. it's good to be... Yeah, honest about it, right? I didn't know men was not gonna want to wipe you up in one second. Thank you. What? They would be crazy. I know. So I'm just gonna like I'm gonna like flat out. Say, I'm gonna put in my bio. You you don't have a hard time meeting guys. No, on. I don't. I don't. Even no, though I'm kicked off you. that one dating app, but now I can go on yours. Wait, you got kicked off a dating app, Raya. Me too. I I can't talk about it anymore okay, because me neither. I didn't know, but I didn't know that. But I, I did too. <laughs> Wait, we got 86 from... <laughs> Wait, I love you so and much. And I'm this waiting so for cool. the next dating app, you know, it's coming, of that babe. caliber. It's coming. It's yes, this is coming. Okay, I promise. Okay, Mary to the Mom. Yes. Your clothing line. Yeah. Tell me about that. There's going to be like a resurgence and a rebrand. I hope. <laughs> yeah, but no. Um, you know, I started the brand when I was 22. Um... It, which is a long time ago, that was 2004, and, like, it, it was, like, female, it, it is female streetwear, and it was really during, like, the heyday of, like, um, before streetwear, like, blew the fuck up and became, like, so mainstream, mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah, I mean, it literally, I mean, I didn't go to college, you know, I just basically started a brand and, like, learned how to, like, be an adult, kind of, but, um, you're scrappy. I'm scrappy. I really am. Yeah. Um, and, but you know, it was like, I mean, everyone's worn it. Rihanna, Cards, A. Levine, Sierra, Fergie. I mean, like so many amazing people. That's fucking So crazy. many amazing women. And, you know, uh, the last like few years, I think I just, I've been dealing with like getting my shit back together, mm. my, myself back together. And now I'm in a place where I'm so ready and focused and it's in the works and it's coming and there's good collaborations coming and I'm going to make my daughter proud. Yay! <laughs> yeah. I'm going to wear that and shit. And you're going to wear it too. Everywhere. <laughs> yes. Isn't it crazy how when you have your shit together internally and you are 
happy with yourself and you yeah. love yourself, how all these things start to fall into place. It's really— Which I'm not there yet, by the way, but, no, like, I know it's— That, to me, is, like, God stuff. Like, that's, like, spiritual. Yeah. You know? That's, mm -hmm. like, this, that's like spirituality, like, mm -hmm. when that shit happens. And it's just, like, part of, like, like the creative process, too, you know? Yeah. Like, when you have room to be creative and your mind isn't, like, in survival mode, whether it's, like, you know, just— just to um, deal with whatever shit that's going on and you can be creative. Everything does fall into place. That's you're speaking to my soul right now, to my soul. Good. Uh, last thing I want to ask, because this has been like such I love interviews like this. They're just like we can go back and we forth. Can go back and we forth. could talk for seven hours. When did you start your OnlyFans? I and did you have hesitation starting it? Or yeah, I like, did. You no, did. I did. Yeah, just to be honest, I totally did because, of course, I was like, "What are people gonna say?" And, and then gonna, they said all this and stuff. They said everything, and I was like, <laughs> "I don't give a fuck," <laughs> you know. And then I also fucking got to do a photo shoot with Drea De Mateo, and Insane. now she's my friend. Like, what? Like, are you kidding me? She's the coolest, best person I've ever met. She's so awesome. She's been so supportive and so sweet. She's a girl's girl. She's a down ass bitch. I fucking love her. And I fucking love OnlyFans. I'm like, this is great. This is a wonderful platform where people don't aren't censored. They don't have ads in their face constantly. They don't have negative algorithms pushing bullshit. Mm. I feel supported. I'm making money. I get to express myself. It's fun. Yeah. I love it. I'm being creative on it. It's dope. You're making a shit ton of money. I'm making which a shit said, ton of money, which is awesome. You you said you made more on OnlyFans in a week than you did on the show. Yes. What type of content? Just like sexy or you don't talk about the Yeah, content. of course. No, it's sexy. Sometimes you see a boob or two. Oh, my God. Um, oh, my God. But it's also like funny. Like it's funny. I, like, I want to I want to see it. I want to see what it's about. I'll give you a free month trial. <laughs> <laughs> Which already comes with it. <laughs> um, so you made a shit ton in a week. Why didn't I do OnlyFans sooner? That's fucking crazy. One week? One week is more than one season. I question why I'm not on there every day. Why aren't you, I girl? Because I can't even Stop the self judgment. Because I'm I'm kind of in the keeping my head above water phase, but I'm coming out of it. And then I want to like really get back into my creative shit and not like my yeah. Let's try to just you know get what we need to get done. Girl, you would kill it. I feel also, like also you could be doing like. You could do podcast shit that's only for that and make, I mean, it's just a whole it's, thing. Right. Like you could, I mean, there's so many things. It's not just like. Yes. It's not just booty hole. No. Like people, I haven't even seen any booty hole. And I have a lot of friends who do it and they're like, I literally just, it has nothing to do with my booty hole. No. People thought my booty hole was on it. <laughs> Why are but you it saying wasn't. booty hole? I don't know. I like that word now, though. It's a booty hole. People thought they're like, Leah's selling pictures of her butthole for $5. <laughs> I, I laughed at that so hard, though, because it's not true. If oh she was God. selling it for $5, I don't do you, think But she also, would, do you know how I mean— well, depending on how many, how subs many five dollar. I mean, five dollars for just the booty hole, and like if, if you have you, a bunch what of if subscribers, you right? Exactly. What if you're? What if you have a hundred thousand subscribers, and each pays five dollars for your booty hole? That's a five hundred thousand dollar booty hole. Damn. So okay, the five dollars isn't looking that bad anymore. And you don't even have to have your face in the booty hole pic, nope. even though it is your OnlyFans. But sure. like, which that would make it way. It could hotter. be an AI booty hole. <laughs> <laughs> I'd make mine perfect looking. <laughs> I would change a whole bunch of shit. <laughs> Not about my booty hole. Maybe like the flaps. Oh Which, yeah, totally. By the way, actually no. No, vagina you know flaps are fine. My yeah, wizard fine. sleeve. I'm like, first of all, I had a kid and I definitely had to get it like re, you know, I had yeah. to get a little stitch done or whatever. And I don't, you know. Doesn't it make it tighter? Can't you? Don't they yeah. ask you? It is. It is. It is. I. It was actually painful for me to have sex after I gave birth, but I also think it's because I like hated my kid's dad. I love him now, but I just don't want. I didn't want to yes. have sex with him, you know. Um, but like I think vaginas are like dope. <laughs> 
They're beautiful. They are Even beautiful. when like they're not, they're they're hot. Well, I I better than balls. Way better, way than, better balls, than balls. But I read something that labiaplasty is like skyrocketing. And then I read there's all of these women that are left without like sensation and I'm just like what the fuck are we doing? No, I've given up too many things. I'm not giving up my orgasm. Are you joking? Oh so God. what? So your die. vagina looks... So my vagina can look like a Barbie? Yeah. Oh, she doesn't have a vagina. But so it looks like Jenna like, Jameson's pussy? Like no. Like it looks like a like a slit. <laughs> right? Like just like a yeah. line. Just a line. Is that what, it, is that what they want like it to look like? Like a hot dog bun? I like it to have a little personality. I, I personally. Agree. I completely agree with that. Pussy personality. Pussy personality. Okay, Leah, you are, like, so much better even in person. Like, we You're just fun. completely vibed. We do. And I love you so I much. I love you. And We're thank you for out. coming on. We are. Yeah. And you are just a badass bitch. You're a badass bitch, I know too. a lot of people tell you that, but, like, you really are. Because I know what you're about to be up no, against. A lot of people tell me horrible things, so thank you. I need to hear that, too. <laughs> Wait, same. <laughs> no one actually ever tells me I'm a badass bitch anymore. But thank you for coming on. And plug your shit thank you for having me you can follow me um at leah mob on instagram um so grateful for my platform you can shop married to the mob mttmnyc.com even though there's not a lot on there a lot more coming soon i love that you were kind of like way ahead of your time with that i feel like thank the mob you. thing is, yeah i was yeah were. and also you, follow me on linkedin just kidding but i love oh, LinkedIn. and your only fans oh and my only fans oh my Wait, god what are you talking about linkedin i love linkedin <laughs> I love LinkedIn. It's the are you oh, on it? No, for oh, what? You need to get on it, girl. To network. It's great. It's it's like smart social media. No one's harassing you about weird shit. Everyone's smart. Everyone's working. Everyone's like Do no you one talk just... to people on it. Yes, and I connect with people. Do you don't have a LinkedIn page? I'm about to make LinkedIn one. Sponsor us. LinkedIn. Yes, get it. I fucking plug my OnlyFans on LinkedIn. I talk about mob. I talk about, I put, put personal stuff. No, it's great. Damn. Okay, I'm going to make myself a fucking LinkedIn page. Get your team to do it for you. Yeah. I, would, I wouldn't even know where to fucking start. <laughs> you guys know where to find me, Sophia, than F. Franklin with a Y. We're also recording from WTF Media Studios in Soho, New York, and subscribe to my fucking YouTube because my tits are out <laughs> and about. <laughs> Bye, Sleuths. Talk to you next week. <laughs>